in function oriented software design we have seen a lot of things now and uh, we'll talk about structured design today and different aspects uh, which are still pending so structured design the aim of structured design is what we have seen what we have done in structured analysis that is uh, we have talked a lot of about uh, dfd representation so it actually transform the result which is your dfd representation or the result of structured analysis into your structure chart so a structure chart is what it represents or it shows your software architecture so various modules making up the system the dependency or the relationship between the modules means how or which module is going to call which module and which module is going to be called by which module the message passing that means parameters passed among different modules this is what the structure chart is all about and it shows your software architecture so structured architecture the structure chart represents easily implementable using programming languages once you have structure chart now you can present it or write it in your high level programming language so there are some key focus a key aspects to your structure chart first is to define the model structure of the software then interaction between this module then procedural aspects how a particular functionality is to be achieved they are not presented procedural aspects they are not there we'll see the basic building blocks of structure chart now rectangular box what it suggests in terms of structure chart a rectangular box is nothing but a module and this is annotated or written with the name of the module it is going to represent like this process order then we have arrows what do you mean by an arrow between two modules as we have seen rectangular box is for module so an arrow between two modules this represents or is implies that during execution actual running the control is passed from one module to the other in the direction of an arrow this is an example we have root these are the direction this module root is going to give or pass control to process order handle event and handle query the data flow arrows what are these and how they are different from the arrows we discussed this data flow represent the data which is passing from one module to another in the direction of the arrow so these are data flow arrows like this root will be invoking or calling process order or giving its control to the process order and the data which is an order which will be the data will be passed from process order to the root what about library modules these are the modules which will be frequently used these library modules they represent frequently called modules frequently employed modules a rectangle with double side edges a rectangle with double side edges will be representing a library modules and this is going to simplify or simplifies drawing when the module is called by several modules in this way so this is a library module called as quicksort then selection a diamond symbol a diamond symbol is going to represent the uh, one module of several modules connected to the diamond symbol is invoked depending on some condition when you want there something to happen or something not to happen with with uh, a result of some condition then you use the selection this form root now this is select whether this has to be given control this one has to be uh, transferred the control or this one has to be given the control what about repetition repetition a loop around control flows arrow denote that the con concerned modules are invoked repeatedly repetition this is a, the arrow which shows a loop around control flow this loop around control flow arrow this is denoting that these concern modules they are going to be invoked repeatedly so a structure chart if there is only one module at the top we call it as the root module as we have just shown in various presentation up till now and there is at most one control relationship between any two module that is 
if module A invokes module B or if B cannot invoke module A. These two possibilities can be there. And what is the re reason behind this restriction? Because we consider modules in a structured chart to be arranged in layers or levels. What is the principle of abstraction in structured chart? It does not allow lower modules or lower level modules to invoke the higher level modules or higher hierarchy modules. But two higher level modules, they can easily invoke the same lower level module. Let us take an example. This root is going to call invoke good, get good data, compute solution and display solution. While this validate data in the third level is being invoked by get good data and compute solution at the same time, so this is possible. What is a bad design? Well, this is obvious if you witness it. It is actually a bad design. What is a shortcoming of such a chart? Let me show you why this is bad. This is bad because this module is calling this, which is not allowed. This module is M6 is calling M3, again disallowed, and M4 calling M2, which is not acceptable. But structured chart, as everything in the world, has shortcomings. What are the shortcomings? Just by observing structured chart, you are not able to understand or you cannot say whether module call another module just once or many a times. Just by viewing at structured chart, you are not able to tell the order in which different modules are going to be invoked. So this is a flow chart. We are quite familiar with the flow chart representation. Flowchart is a convenient technique to represent the flow of control in a system. This is a simple, say, a flowchart of checking A equal to B. If it is yes, then B equal to 20. If no, B equal to 20. There is a dummy dummy. Uh, you can enter anything here. And this is uh, diamond. You check your conditions here. This is a simple example which represents this. So what is the uh, flowchart versus structure chart concept? A structure chart differs from flowchart. In, the, in three basic ways, principal ways. First of all, it is difficult to identify modules of a software from its flowchart representation, as you have seen just now. Data in the chain among the modules is not given or cannot be represented in your flowchart. Then the sequential ordering of tasks, which is inherent in a flowchart, is suppressed in a structured chart. So, this is a good point of flowchart which is not in your structured chart. Now look at transformation of DFD model into structured chart. This is very important because actually you are, you are this is what you have done in structure analysis. This is what you are going to do in your structure design. So there are two strategies to which guides the transformation of DFD into a structured chart. First is your transform analysis. The other is transaction analysis. So what is transform analysis? There are various steps. The first step is to divide the DFD into three types of parts. Input, output, and logical processing. Then, first part is in proportion in a DFD. What it does? It processes or the processes, it represents the processes which convert or con uh, transfer or uh, changes input data from some physical to a logical form. Just for the example, read characters from a terminal or store in internal tables or list. So, these are two different aspects which are being uh, converted. And each input portion is called an efferent branch and this is possible to have more than one efferent branch in a DFD. Then coming to our proportion, second part of a DFD. What it does, it transforms the output data from logical to physical form. For example, from list or array into an output characters and again each output portion is called an efferent branch. Efferent branch, efferent branch. So the remaining portion of DFD is called the central transform. Then we derive structure chart by drawing one functional component for whom, for the central branch, each efferent branch, and then each efferent branch, input, output. And then we identify the highest level input and output transforms. It may require quite experienced and skilled people. There are certain guidelines also. First, you have to trace the input until a bubble is formed where output cannot be deduced from the inputs or not. And the processes which validate input are not center transforms and processes which sort input or filter data from it, they are. First level of structure chart, we draw a box for each input and output units. We draw a box for central transform. Then we try to refine this structure chart. 
Now we add sub functions which are required by each high level module and there are various levels. So many levels of modules may be required to be added. Then we come to factoring. The idea or the technique of breaking functional components into their sub components is known as factoring. So factoring would include read and write modules, error handling modules and then initialization and termination modules. We may divide our breaking or factoring in these three scenarios. And then finally, we would like to validate whether all bubbles have been mapped to modules. Let us take an example, RMS calculating software. You know this is level 0 DFD and this is user, compute RMS, context diagram. Result has been shown to user and the data items has to be inputted from the user, which is inputted to the compute RMS 0. The problem description as far as cursory analysis is concerned, this is quite easy to see that the system needs to perform first accept the input numbers from the user then we have to validate the numbers we need to compute the root mean square of input numbers and following display the result so this is how we do it this is the first part of validating and reading this is the second part of displaying and in between we have computing of rms and when we see this level one dfd i just showed you uh, we identify read numbers and validate numbers bubbles as the afferent branch these are the afferent branch and we display as the afferent branch. These are the afferent branch, afferent branch. So we make it like this. Same stuff. And about tic tac toe computer game, as soon as either human player or computer wins, we have to con congratulate the winner. If neither player manages to get three consecutive marks along a straight line, then we have to show that the game is drawn. So this is tic-tac-toe, human player, display and move. We make a level one at DFD. So this is to validate the move. This is the display board. This is the play move. This is check the winner. And in this, how we're going to make it. We can move it and make it like root. These are three possibilities. And these two, again, are being divided into sub-functions. Then we come to transaction analysis. This is useful for designing the transaction processing programs. So we Choose this transform centered system, which is characterized by a similar processing steps by every data item, which is processed by three things input, process, and output bubbles. And this transaction driven systems, we have one of several possible paths through which the DFD is uh, traversed depending upon the input data value. So, transaction, you know, giving, passing, or you know, transaction is uh, if I transact you, you can, I will give you money, you will receive the money. In the same uh, scenario, any input data value that triggers an action. Just for instance, select menu options might trigger different functions, which is represented by a tag identifying its type. And then transaction analysis uses this tag to divide the system into two things, several transaction modules and one transaction center module. This is transaction center. These are several transaction parts. So for TS, we have discussed at stretch what the TS problem is. This is uh, the level of one DFD. And please concentrate on this because we are just going to make a structured chart out of it. And let us summarize what we have done. We have discussed structural analysis of a larger problem. We defined some guidelines for constructing satisfactory DFD. DFD model was quite simple and useful, but do have some short shortcomings. We have discussed this also. Then we started uh, today this structure design and the aim we discussed it to transform the DFD representation to the structure chart. The structure chart is going to represent module structure, interaction upon, among different modules and procedural aspects that are not represented. Structure design provides two strategies, transform analysis and transaction analysis to transform a DFD into a structure chart. We saw the examples of these and we uh, saw three examples. So it takes a lot of practice to become a good software designer. Just try to solve all the problems listed in your assignment in the book of Dr. Rajiv Mal and then you are good to go. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself. This is what we have done in design, software design.